Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Common Sense Conversations with the Alliance for Gun Responsibility. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. We're really excited to have Senator Patty Kuderer and Representative Tana Sen with us to talk about how armed intimidation is really impacting our communities today. They are both leading the way on much needed legislation this session to address this growing threat. Welcome to you both and thank you for making the time to chat. So let's dive right in. Um, two weeks ago, sadly, a pro-Trump mob, some of whom were armed, stormed the US Capitol in a deadly attack on our democracy. And those events of January 6th were really shocking and underscored the very real threat posed by white supremacist gun lobby rhetoric and openly carried firearms. And I know you both are really well aware of this, that in many ways they were just a terrifying culmination of a troubling rise in armed extremism and far right protest. But both of you were concerned about this issue before January 6th. So I'd like to start by hearing um, what sort of prompted you to move into this issue space? And of course, any other thoughts or response that you have um, to January 6th? And Senator Kudor, why don't we start with you? Sure, thank you. And it's great to be with everyone. You know, I can tell you that I've been watching what's been happening around our country for the last several years and becoming increasingly alarmed at the number of people that were bringing weapons to protest. And as I've been saying, um, you don't need a weapon to exercise your First Amendment right. You need your voice. And when people are protesting, there, there are good reasons for that. There's, they're upset about something or they're for something, but the tensions can run high. And so you're going to have pros and cons on, on either side of this issue. And to put a weapon into that mix, to, to bring a weapon and open carry a weapon at uh, a protest like that invites violence. And it invites the potential for someone to be seriously hurt or killed. And so in watching all of these events unfold from you know, Charlottesville to Kenosha, Wisconsin, to Michigan, to the Capitol, to here in Washington, in Olympia, and in Seattle, I think we're to the point where we just say, enough is enough and we have to have some common sense regulations in place that restrict where you can bring a weapon we already do that for courthouses and schools and jails etc we're just expanding that to include capitol campus and state buildings and protests thank you for that representative Sven. yeah thanks renee so last spring right here in Olympia at our state capitol, uh, hundreds of people came to the capitol armed with automatic weapons on their back, tactical gear, fatigues, uh, you know, weapons tacked in, tucked into their pockets on their side. And it was intimidating. And, and not to, just to me or to legislators, but there were school groups. There were families advocating for disability issues there were staff and lobbyists in the halls who were blocked and intimidated by these uh, mostly men with armed wep uh, armed with weapons. And it, you know, we need our voice and advocacy, not violence and intimidation to make change. And here they were threatening that very ability to, to exercise our democracy. And that just was untenable to me. And, and that wasn't the first time, as Senator Kuderer said, and that sadly was not the last time, and around our country we have seen it. And so last week's siege attempt at the capital of our country, I mean, I just imagine what ha would have happened if they were all armed and to the teeth, some of them were, but luckily not, and they banned guns at the state, at the, the nation's capital. And so when we look at what we can do in our state and what we wanna do in our state, Senator Kuder and I, we, just, we want people to be safe. We want to reduce gun violence. We want to make sure that there is an open opportunity to have disagreements about policy, about the direction of things going on in our state, but that people are safe in doing that. That there isn't, again, violence and intimidation is a way to make change in our democracy, but voices and words and debate. 
Yeah, I really appreciate that. We've had a lot of conversation among staff about just imagining if DC's gun laws were less restrictive and what that could have meant in terms of the outcomes of the six. So really appreciate that reflection. Well, we're so happy to have both of you really leading in this area. It's something that really matters to us as an organization and to our tens of thousands of supporters. And so we'd love to just have you both talk um, in a little bit more detail about the specific bills that you're both carrying this year. And why don't we start with you, Rep. Sen. So I'm really looking at this issue of, you know, we know that if we're in the state capitol or if we're at a protest that um, there's been a lot of attention on those concerns of people with guns. But, you know, just handfuls of, of kids in my neighboring town uh, we're on the corner uh, holding up just signs, Black Lives Matter or whatever their signs were. And they were approached by a group of people who pulled weapons on them to intimidate them, to try and get them to take down their signs and to really to you know shut them up. And it's that kind of thing also that's really threatening. And when you're together in a group is even more alarming. So I'm looking to expand what we call the criminal mischief statute to include uh, a group of three or more who uh, basically pull a weapon on somebody or uh, threaten them in such a way that they are that they feel threatened and make sure that that is a crime uh, a criminal mischief tr crime and something that we can get law enforcement uh, and prosecutors to um, to bring as charges because we have some other things on the books uh, but there's it's more of a focus on the intent of the perpetrator versus the feeling and the response of the victim and so the way that we've written this is much more, how does the, what's the impact on the person versus the intent? Uh, and so there's really kind of some of those nuances that they're really important to make sure that the laws on the books not only can be, but are implemented. Yeah, we really appreciate your thoughtful um, work in developing this policy. So thank you for explaining that to us. Um, Senator Cooter. Yeah, so I am amending the statute that's already in place that prohibits weapons at certain places like courthouses and schools and jails and certain parts of public mental health facilities, et cetera. And the idea is that we've already recognized that there are some places where public safety takes precedence, where no one needs to bring a gun for self-defense. And I would say that you don't need a gun when you're visiting the state legislature either. Um, and so it expands that statute, but the part about protests and the definitions that we used, that was actually uh, borrowed from an Alabama statute that's been in place since the seventies, I believe, um, that bans weapons at protests, uh, guns at protests. So I thought that that was very interesting that here is a solidly red state very pro Second Amendment state that already has this restriction in place. And so that is why I decided to, to use that. And plus, it made sense to me when I read it. So we use that as the model. Um, and um, again, the goal is to expand the, the original statute that we have in place with the recognition that there are certain areas where we need to make sure that the public safety is assured. Senator Cooter uh, mentioned a really good point that we're not going out on a limb here as Washington state to propose banning of guns at state capitals. Red states, blue states across the country already have these in place. Uh, and so usually Washington state is quite ahead of the curve on a number of issues. And in this case, uh, we need to catch up. We do, that's a very good point. And I just wanna reiterate, I, I think we're so fortunate to have such a thoughtful policymakers um, and the two of you working on this really important issue. Um, and I know this isn't the first uh, piece of gun violence prevention that you've both worked on. So I just want to also acknowledge that you've been working to keep our communities safe um, since you both have taken office and really want to um, just publicly appreciate and acknowledge that. So um, in the few short minutes that we have left, just wanted to ask, um, you know, if you have a message for our supporters, your constituents, um, people across the state about how they can help you really work to pass these laws this year, um, what can we do to help? 
Senator Kujor. Personal stories, personal stories are always so impactful um, when you're reaching out. I know that's why I became a uh, such a advocate for gun responsibility. Uh, and also just, again, the interest in wanting to express yourself and the value of that and the understanding that there are disagreements and that violence and weapons is not the way to do that. And we really want to make sure that we reduce uh, gun deaths in our state. Thank you, Representative. Yeah, so I would say that uh, Rep. Sen makes some excellent points and, uh, and that's exactly right. Um, we do need to speak out about the common sense aspect of these um, bills. I also, you know, we always say contact your legislator and we want you to do that. But you know what? Everybody has relatives, everybody has friends, coworkers, and some of those may live in a district where the legislators may not support this legislation right now. They need to hear from you. They, you need to contact people that you're related to that you know who can contact their legislator as well and, and let them know how important these bills are to them as well. I would also encourage them, not just a letter to the editor, but think about writing an op-ed in your local newspaper. I know in my little small hometown where I grew up, um, my, uh, you know, my niece who was a uh, whopping 12 years old at the time did a little op-ed and they printed it. So I'm just saying, you don't know, you know, your, your local newspapers really like to have input from their, from their community and it really doesn't matter what age you are. Let's have some voices out there. And I think voices of students in particular are, are very strong. Yeah, absolutely. The, the uh, juxtaposition between uh, members of Congress being scared about somebody roaming the hallways with a weapon, I think one of the most impactful uh, tweets and kind of you know memes that were going around was like, well, now they know how students feel who are scared at school. And that is just, I mean, this, you know, the reality of that, that we teach uh, kids to be scared of, you know, uh, somebody with a assault weapon or with a gun at school. And here we are, members of Congress, so many who vote against sensible gun legislation, living that fear. Uh, so that was just, that was startling. Yeah, that but, is an excellent point. And I'll just end with you know, we should all strive to get to a point where there, where we don't have to have active shooter drills in our schools. Those are both really, really good points. And I, um, I will close this out by um, just saying, you know, as, as uh, a leader of an organization that brings people, hundreds of people every single session to Olympia, and that has felt the levels of intimidation and fear escalate every single year, um, just thank you um, on behalf of our organization, on behalf of our thousands of supporters from across the state, hundreds of thousands of supporters across the state um, for really stepping into this. And um, hopefully next session, we'll all be feeling safer. Thank Indeed. you, Paul. It's thank a pleasure you. to work with you, Renee and Senator Cooter. Ditto. Thank you. Thank you both. And, um, common sense conversation. So thank you all for tuning in and look forward to seeing you next time.